Good morning. morning. Welcome to Metaview United Methodist Church, 768 Summit Road here in Eden, North Carolina. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we've got a, a, to me it's a very special service. Uh, we're going to talk about heaven, uh, our eternal home. So I'm, I'm hoping that today, by the time you leave, you have learned at least maybe one new thing that you didn't know about heaven, and if that's not the case, at least I'll remind you of a lot of things that you already know. But uh, anyway, we appreciate you being here, and we also appreciate those people that watch our service on YouTube and also on Facebook. The song that we just uh, uh, heard was a Mansion Over the Hilltop. That was my dad's favorite song. And it certainly talks about, you know, our heavenly home. For our announcements, um, Joe's home, that's great news. It certainly continues to be our prayer. Uh, 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 still appreciate Diane and Francis and all their work. If, if you didn't notice as you came in, look up above the doors as you're walking out of the church, and you'll see where uh, some work was done there. We had a leak there and the leak has been solved and they've uh, you know repaired where the leak did a little bit of damage there above the door that looks good the parsonage is in good shape now so we're thankful for that could have taken a lot longer than, than it did um, you'll notice here at the front of the church uh, i've got some uh, pencils and i've got some white rule notebook paper I talked to one of the teachers at Holmes Middle School yesterday and asked, you, you know, what do you need the most? That we, we, we can't give you everything you need by any means, but, but we would like to help you as we have for the last number of years. And, you know, what, what would be most helpful? And, and the response was pencils and uh, the, the wide ruled notebook paper. I'm emphasizing why rule because the alternative to that is college rule. Middle school students do not want college rule paper. The lines are, it's, it's just a lot more lines on the sheet of paper to fill up if you're writing something. So they would rather have the wide ruled notebook paper. So in any, any way that you can help us uh, between now and, uh, you know, the middle of, of, of August or, or thereabouts. Uh, appreciate it. And again, and if somebody brings something else, that's fine. They'll, they'll certainly take whatever we give them. Uh, but, but again, uh, you know, realizing that we're a little fewer in number and attendance these days, uh, I wanted to know what, what would make the biggest impact? What, what would make the biggest difference? Not only for, for the students, but for the teachers. Because if, if the students don't have some, as several of us, I'm not going to say old teachers, but several of us veteran teachers, uh, know if the kids don't have it, the teacher provides it. And, uh, and they really do appreciate what we do to help them. So if you happen to go somewhere and you see some uh, wide rule paper or pencils, uh, if you would get some and um, okay. we, uh, collect whatever we're going to collect, then I'll, I'll get them to, to Holmes Middle School, sixth grade. Um, are there other announcements that we need to share this morning? Do we have any birthdays? Anniversaries. James has a birthday. But you told us, well, not you told us last week. I hope you don't forget. Well, now, I do forget things anymore. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad we remember that. So, let's sing happy birthday to James. Happy birthday. Okay. Uh, 
Let's turn in our hymn book to 702. 701. Uh, I'm sorry, 701. I got it wrong. Uh, when we all get to heaven, let's, let's stand as you're able. 701, please. Thank you. 
agree as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, <coughs> the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. How has God blessed you this week? Still getting you a bat. <laughs> Others. Amen. Others. He keeps us healthy every day. And he's with us every moment of every day. Praise the Lord. I think he's with us with the sewage problem out of the Carson problems out there because everything is built. Boom, boom, boom. Absolutely. And, and a lot of that boom, boom, boom was because of you and Francis staying on top of everything. <laughs> so, but yeah, that, that is a blessing that that, that is done. And, and, and we, we, we don't have the bill yet, but it's, it, the work <coughs> had to be done and it is done. So that's, we are thankful for that. Others. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Our responsive reading is found on page 741, <coughs> Psalm 4. Again, 741. Please join with me. Answer me when I call. O God of my right. How long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek out the lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. The Lord hears when I call. Be angry, but do not sin. Be with your own hearts and your days and your silence. Offer right sacrifices. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their gain and wine abound. This time Nick's going to share with us in music.
right into our theme today of heaven. And one of these days we're all going to fly away from this place. Hallelujah. We have many that we want to keep on our prayer list and, and, and remember. Uh, Deborah Donovan, uh, Ronald James Denny, the Watson Girl at Duke, Tabitha Godwin, our nation, Martha Eames, Unspoken Request, Joe Zanetti, uh, Suzanne Ellis, Rhonda Chapman, Jim Witt, Peggy's <coughs> sisters, Fred and Faye, David Moore, Don Warren, Lori Owens, uh, workers at Terry Stan, or they were workers at Terry Stan, Sylvia Bryant, Lord Slanders. Do we have others that we want to lift up this morning? Let us pause for our meditation and our prayers. physical, just, just, Lord, just help people to deal with their lives. You know, we don't know what other people are going through because we're not walking in their shoes. We can sometimes imagine, but we don't know. Lord, be with the athletes that are in the Olympics, Protect them not only from the virus, but also from physical injury as they're uh, trying their best to, to win medals for the various countries. Lord, be with the United States. There is so much going on today that needs to be changed. Whether it's our economy, the border, politics involved in, in, in health and in every other decision that is made. Lord, be with our churches. Fill us with compassion that we might reach out to others and share your, your love, your care. And Lord, we thank you most of all for our salvation that one day by believing in you, we have a home in heaven. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We still have our offering plate in the, in the aisle I'm here at the church and those that or watching from home, if you would like to contribute to the upkeep of our church. Uh, if you would send your contribution to Diane Carter, our church treasurer, that would be very helpful. Uh, Nick, if you'll share with our special music today, please.
There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners
who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working hereby, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Heaven is a place, just like Eden, Wentworth, Stoneville, these are places. Heaven is a place. I began my sermon today with, with a couple of statements, and, and a lot of the ideas that I'm sharing today came from a group called Keep Believing Ministries. I tried to do a little research with that group and found that it supports a lot of ministers and Christians and, uh, and so forth with various ideas and so forth. But I appreciate uh, them sharing ideas on the internet that I'm able to share with you today. But there's two statements that I believe to be almost universally true. Everybody wants to know about heaven, and just about everybody wants to go there. Recent polls show that nearly 80% of all Americans believe that there is a place called heaven. I find that statistic encouraging. Because it tells me that even in this very skeptical age, there is something deep inside the human heart that cries out, there's got to be something more. Where is heaven? There are three things I can tell you about. Where is heaven? Listen to the words of Jesus the night before he was crucified. This comes from John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. My Father's house is a real place. It's just as real as with real people, which is why the Bible sometimes compares heaven to a mansion that's got many rooms. And sometimes it's an enormous city teeming with people. It talks about that in Revelation 21. A lot of the information about heaven from John comes in the 21st chapter of Revelation. The Bible tells you and me that heaven is the dwelling place of God. His throne is there. The angels are there. The Lord Jesus Christ is there in heaven. Philippians 3.20 says very plainly that our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a, a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus told the thief on the cross these words in Luke. Today you will be with me in paradise. Third, the Bible hints that heaven is not as far away as we might think. Because heaven is a real place, we sometimes think that it's going to be somewhere way out of our present universe that would be billions and billions of light years away. Early Christians understood that they would pass immediately from life into the presence of Christ in heaven. Now, how can that be possible if, if heaven is beyond the farthest galaxy? Hebrews 12 tells us something amazing about what the gospel has done for us. 
but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. But now in Christ, we've been brought near to heavenly realities. Think about this. We're not that far from heaven. We're not that far from angels. We're not that far from our loved ones in heaven. We're not that far from God. We're not that far from Jesus himself. Heaven is a real place where Jesus is right now, and he's probably not that far away from us. What is heaven like? The Bible doesn't give us a great deal of information. What is heaven like? Here are some biblical facts about heaven. It's God's dwelling place, Psalm 33. It's where Christ is today, Acts 1. It's where Christians go when they die, Philippians 1. It's the Father's house. John 14. It's a city designed and built by God. Hebrews 11. It's a better country. Hebrews 11. And it's paradise. Luke 23. You know, most of us have heard that heaven is a place where the, the streets are paved with gold, the gates are made of pearl, and the walls are made of precious stones. Those images come from Revelation chapter 21. And it offers us the most ex extended picture of heaven in the entire Bible. If you ask me if I believe those things to be literally true, yes and no. Yes, they are literally true, but no. Heaven won't be anything like we imagine. It will be so much grander, so much greater than we can even imagine. Here's a, a, a legend that points that up pretty good. I love the, the old story about the rich man that was there on his deathbed, and he negotiated with God. Now, we don't normally negotiate with God, but, but he did. And he wanted God to allow him to bring his earthly treasures with him to heaven. God's reaction was that this was most unusual. But since this man presented himself at the pearly gates, suitcase in hand, both hands actually, because he had stuffed that one suitcase with just as many bars of gold bullion as he could fit into that suitcase. St. Peter said, sorry, but you know the rules. You can't take it with you. But the man protested, God said I could. One suitcase. St. Peter checked found out that this one would be an exception. St. Peter took the suitcase and opened it. And he saw all of those gold bars there in the suitcase. And he asked very quizzically, you brought pavement? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the story is from a sermon Heaven by Dr. David Leninger back in 1997. When John writes that 
A street is paved with gold. I don't doubt his words. He simply reports what he saw in his vision. Thus, his words are literally true. They are also meant to tell us that the things we value most here on earth is used to pave the roads in heaven. A city built by God. Heaven is a real place filled with real people. The Bible pictures it as a great city with, filled with all of God's people. What would a city look like? It would be a city with no pollution in the skies, always clear. No crime or violence. Criminals aren't going to enter heaven. No greedy politicians, no, bug, no, no drug pushers, no child molesters, no potholes, no power outages. It would be filled with abundant, abundant parks, rivers, rolling lawns, flowing streams. Lying the streets would be flowers. Constant bloom, fruit trees of every kind. Every species of plant life growing free from pestilence and disease. The gates would be made of pearl, the walls of jasper, the streets of gold. Precious stones would lie on the ground like plaything emeralds, rubies, diamonds galore. On every hand there would be children laughing. Bright conversation, music floating in every direction. In the city that God builds, there'll be no more tears, no more sorrows, no regrets, no remorse, bitterness gone forever, failure left far behind, suffering redeemed and rewarded, no eyeglasses, no braces, no wheelchairs. No false teeth, no bald heads, no hearing aids, no crutches, no more hospitals, no more nursing homes, no more paramedics or CPR. Doctors are going to have to find a new job. They aren't needed anymore. Aspirin is gone, accidents over, cancer disappeared, heart attacks vanished. AIDS a distant memory. In heaven, no one grows old or feeble. There's one other thing you won't find in heaven. There's no cemeteries in that city that God builds. Why? There are no funerals, for in that grand, great city, no one will ever die. If you make it to that city, you live forever, never to die again. Either you believe in heaven, or you don't. It's either a real place, or it isn't. This is heaven where all our best dreams finally come true. Who's in heaven right now? God's in heaven. Because heaven is God's dwelling place. The Lord Jesus Christ has been in heaven ever since he ascended from earth right after his resurrection. Acts, 9, Acts chapter 1 verse 19 tells us that. The Bible tells us that angels are in heaven. In fact, there are myriads of, of angels, unaccountable numbers of heavenly beings, all of them serving the Lord in, in just all kinds of ways. Testament saints of faith who trusted in God's word look forward to God's redemption at Calvary and includes every true believer from every continent from every denomination some people's going to be surprised by that every denomination everyone who was generally trusted in Christ as Lord and Savior they're going to do that I also think that children who died before the age of accountability, history on heaven. 
And I would also include those people that are born with mental limitations, that they cannot understand the gospel. The Bible teaches that the moment we die, we go directly into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul spoke of this in 2 Corinthians 5, and also in Philippians chapter 1. Not everyone is in heaven, though. Some people won't make it. The Bible speaks of the saved and the lost. The saved are those who trust Jesus Christ as their eternal Savior. The lost are those who do not trust Christ as Savior. We're either saved or we're lost. There's no middle category. You will either spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. I'm sure of this one truth. No one will go to heaven except by the grace of God through the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ. If a man says no to Jesus, he has no hope of heaven. Will we know each other in heaven? There was a Bible teacher of another generation. His name was William Pettingill. And he said, we may be sure that we'll not know less in heaven than we know here. And proof he quotes Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, when it says, no, we see that a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. When we get to heaven, we will know each other as God knows us, because all the imperfections of this life will be removed. Pettingill concludes that in heaven we will know every person and all of them will be friends and loved ones to us. W.A. Criswell makes an additional point. He said, I'll, I'll be the same person that I am now only with all the imperfections and limitations of sin finally removed. What are we going to do in heaven? Heaven will not be boring. It will be the best party that you've ever been to in your life. Much better. We're going to help God run the universe. Not that he needs help, but we'll volunteer. No one's going to sit around in a cloud eating grapes and polishing his halo. No, we're all going to be too busy for that. What are we going to do? We're going to worship without distraction. We're going to serve without exhaustion. We're going to fellowship without fear. We're going to learn without fatigue. We're going to rest without boredom. That list comes from a sermon by David Burns. The best part of heaven is we'll be seeing Jesus face to face. We'll worship the Son of God. We're going to celebrate His great victory over sin while the endless ages of eternity roll on and on. And the best music, we love music here at Men of You, the best music that you've ever heard will pale when you consider the music in heaven. The most awesome worship you've ever experienced on earth is going to be dim compared to the reflection of the praise we will render around the throne of God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, John 14. He also said, I am the door. If any man enters through me, he shall be saved, John 10. Several years ago, there was a 
a, a pastor from um, Florida. I used to watch him on television, uh, Dr. D. James Kennedy, Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Flo Lauderdale, Florida. Anyway, he and some other religious leaders had gone to, to Washington. They were meeting with President Ronald Reagan there in the White House. And they got to be talking about heaven and why should I let you into heaven? If, if you were asked that question, what would you say? And they, they asked Ronald Reagan that question. If you were standing there at the pearly gates in front of St. Peter, he said, why should I let you in? What reason would you give? And the president thought for just a moment. Well, I, I guess I have to answer with John 3.16, he said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is indeed a good answer because your only hope of heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me make this very personal. If we were to die today, do you know for certain that you're going to heaven? I've already said that it, this is the most important thing. You can't say, I, I think so, I hope so. If you're wrong, you're going to be wrong for a long, long time. And I'm sorry we don't have a lot of other people here to hear that. What we need is solid ground on which to stand. And we have it in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our entire hope of heaven is wrapped up in what Jesus did when he died on the cross for the sins of the world and rose from the dead on Easter morning. I started to have us to sing this song that I want to share the verses from that you'll recognize. It's, it's, it's a, a beloved hymn and it goes this way. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. That says it all. If you want to go to heaven, you must base your hope on the solid rock of Jesus' blood and righteousness. Are we standing on that rock this morning? Are we wholly leaning on Jesus' name? We prepare for heaven, and then God prepares heaven for us. I've already told you that most people believe in heaven. Most people think they're going there. But are they on the right road? Are they building their lives on Jesus Christ, the solid rock? Too many, I fear, are standing on seeking sand and they don't even know it. What is our hope for heaven? Mine and I think all of yours is Jesus Christ. We've staked everything on Him. If He can't take me to heaven, then I'm not going there. When the dark night falls, the lights go out, and the waters of death swirl around us, what will happen to each of us? If you know Jesus, there's nothing to fear. We put our trust in Jesus. We run to the cross, stand with our full weight, on that solid rock of salvation. May God help you and me to trust in Jesus 
and in Him alone for our salvation. And may God grant that we will all meet in one day in heaven. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for being the solid rock. Thank you for allowing each of us that believe in you to put our faith in you and know that one day we have heaven as our home. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn today, we're marching to Zion. It's number 733. Uh, let us stand as you're able. 733.